Hello, hello everybody. Good afternoon, Dr. Barry. First of all, I want to apologize. It's kind of a little bit late, but uh, I had a couple of add-ons in because today is my half day. So, you know, we like to, uh, you know, squeeze as much as possible because they know that they're not going to be able to get with me uh, later this afternoon. But again, welcome to another edition of today's Lunch and Learn today. Uh, some good news, first and foremost, uh, if you have not checked out uh, drpsblog.com. Go ahead and check that out today. I, my most recent post is my first guest podcast. It is on uh, the. I have a link to. I have a link on my blog post. I actually post a link under the comments as well. In fact, let me. So while we're doing my, you know, our normal housekeeping stuff, we do every time uh, at the beginning of the thing. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna put the link to uh, that post so you can go ahead and uh, check that out. Uh, and uh, it's Dr. Dan. Uh, he's a podiatrist, business consultant, uh, best-selling author, and his uh, podcast is Taking About Back Your Health. And you know, my my segment today uh, was pretty much focused on uh, what every patient needs to know. And as you know, that's a very common theme for me. So, like always, we're gonna do some housekeeping things. We're gonna go ahead and. Uh, share if you if you get on now go ahead and like and share um, if you have not had a chance go ahead and check out the blog post again I am gonna put it on our comments before we get started today so let's uh, give us a second here And again, right now I'm putting the link uh, to that uh, to that podcast post today. Um, so again, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Barry Pierre, your board certified internist, founder at drpierresblog.com, author, speaker, soon to be podcaster as well. I can't wait to add that uh, title, uh, you know, to my introduction. Uh, bring you another edition of the Lunch and Learn. You know we do this two times a week. Every Tuesday and Thursday we try to bring it uh, at starting at 12.30. But, you know, just depending on, you know, patient load, patient cases. And, you know, from, from that standpoint, sometimes we run a little bit late. Uh, but, you know, we're going to get this kind of thing started into gear. Uh, if you're joining us uh, late, go ahead and like and share uh, amongst your friends and family. Because, uh, you know, this is something that I think is going to be uh, hit home for a lot of people, um, especially those who actually go to the doctor, especially those who have, you know, uh, uncles and fathers and, you know, brothers who, you know, go to the doctor and you know that uh, they should be going a lot more than they actually are. So I just want to kind of go over go over um, 10 very common uh, lies that I at least I get in the office. And the uh, reason why, my motivation for doing today's Lunch and Learn, um, if you had not had a chance, is to check out my, uh, my um, I'm featured in an article on foxnews.com on the health section. And it kind of talks about, you know, very common lies that men tell their doctor. And um, I wanted to kind of go into a little bit more depth in that regard. So let's, let's start. So we got number one, um, that their blood pressure. Number one, blood pressure is only high when I come to the doctor's office. Uh, for uh, those who may know or may not know, uh, my male patients tend to be very reluctant on uh, taking medications. 
My male patients tend to be very reluctant on coming to the doctor's office, period, um, let alone taking medications. Uh, so uh, a very common thing I find in my office is, you know, when their their blood pressure is high and, you know, sometimes it's the second, third time they see me and it's still high. Um, there's always this excuse of why it's high. It's, it's never like, you know, straight up, yeah, man, I got blood pressure. I need to start on medication because they, they tend to know that, you know, once they... Once they accept, I won't even say get labeled because they're already hypertensive, but once they accept that I have high blood pressure, they know they got to take a blood pressure medication for it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I get that excuse all the time as far as, uh, you know, their blood pressure only being high when they come here and it's always perfectly normal uh, when, when they're outside the office. And a lot of that, again, is really just to avoid, one, the label of having high blood pressure, and two, the, the the need to actually have to be on medications all the time. They hate to do it. Um, number two, and uh, this one, uh, the, the, the wives and girlfriends will definitely agree with me. Um, when I ask my men, none of them snore. When I talk to the, the men in my practice, uh, none of them believe that they snore or snore as loud as their partners really believe they uh, snore, uh, which, is, which is hilarious. I have some, some families where the, the husband and wife has to sleep in like separate rooms uh, because the husband snores so bad. And why is this important, especially when we talk about snoring? Snoring really isn't the, the big concern for me when, when we talk about um, sleep habits from that standpoint. Uh, but for patients who snore, and even patients who tend to be a little bit obese, uh, we know that they suffer from sleep apnea at a much more higher clip uh, than those who don't snore. We, so we know sn snoring is a big um, big risk factor for patients uh, undergoing sleep apnea. And I, I, don't, I think we've talked about sleep apnea in the past. If not, we'll, we'll make sure we touch on it in a, in a different episode, maybe next week. Um, but sleep apnea is huge. Um, and in our day and age, especially, and we know like one of the first questions, especially on any sleep apnea screening test is how much do they snore? So most of my male patients always lie to me, say they don't snore. They don't know why their wife had to sleep in a whole separate room uh, when they go to sleep. So snoring is a big one. Um, problems urinating. Uh, that's a big thing that I tend to run into as far as that denial. Uh, oh, Justin, what's going on, bro? My friend Justin on the, uh, the live uh, viewing today. Um, I tend to run into a lot of my patients, especially my male patients, who never have any problems urinating. And again, why is why is urinating a problem? Because if they have problems urinating, I get concerned for like prostate issues. Hey, Dr. Shanika, how are you doing? Let me see. All right, sorry about that. Um, so they tend to have problems. Make that easier on myself. Hey, Dr. Shanika, how are you doing today? Uh, appreciate you joining in. We're talking about common lies men tell me in the doctor's office uh, that I get all the time. Um, so number one, we talked about how their blood pressure only seems to be high when they come to see me. Uh, number two, we talked about the fact that none of them seem to snore, even though their partners have to sleep in entirely different rooms because of all of the snoring. Uh, number three, we're talking about urinating problems uh, because, and especially in my standpoint, when I talk about urinary issues, uh, I get extremely concerned for like prostate. Prostate's always my big issue whenever I hear of problems of urinating. Now there is some other issues as well, as far as, you know, diabetes, is is a big one um, you know so if you're if you're diabetic you're probably gonna have problems urinating whether you're urinating a little bit more frequently than not uh, so there's a lot of different medical conditions that we uh, get concerned about for patients who urinate and have problems urinate so again men I need you kind of let us know if you're really having some of these issues like I said a lot of these problems I do not have with my female patients my female patients tend to be much more forthcoming uh, with information especially when they come to see me they 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 you know they almost tell me too many problems so uh, my men I usually have to kind of it's like pulling teeth to kind of get uh, information out of them so again urinating if you got problems urinating make sure uh, you're telling your doctor that um, vision uh, vision issues as well none of my men uh, want to wear glasses they don't because again a lot men tend to be very self-conscious even though we act like we're not 
Um, so they understand, you know, as with age and even without age, um, that the vision issues can sometimes, uh, you know, start spelling the uh, demise of uh, being old. So they don't want to be labeled old. So they, they're very quick uh, to deny any vision uh, issues or concerns, even though they may have to, you know, stand this close to the TV. Oh, hey, Maria, how you doing? Uh, my lovely wife is on. Uh, wife, you know, PhD candidate. She is day by day therapy. She's on. We're talking about uh, lies, men tell in the doctor's office. So we're on number four and we're talking about vision problems. So again, uh, men, if you know, if you're having blurry vision, double vision, trouble seeing at night, if you see, if you're thinking that now you're going to have to, you got to sit a little bit closer to that TV uh, while you're watching it, or, you know, you got to do that, the whole squint game uh, that you're doing, uh, please, please, please uh, make sure you let your doctor know um, extremely important. Hey, Gardine, how you doing? Uh, oh, that's a Gardine is a high school, high school um, classmate of mine's from from way back and when. Uh, from that standpoint, Gardine, we're talking about men's lives today. Um, oh, this is a big one: um, erectile dysfunction issues, right? Um, because all the men who come in my doctor's office always want to blame their erectile ED issues to like low testosterone. And again, you know, they're seeing the commercials and they always feel like the only reason why they have ED issues because their testosterone is low. So what did they come to me? They, they don't even want me to do any like workup of why they're having erectile dysfunction issues. They just want me to write a prescription for testosterone. And a lot of times, especially, and I, I tell my men, I try to, you know, try to tell my men is that when you have an erectile dysfunction issues, that's a vascular concern. Now, could it be low testosterone? Sure. Well, we're not going to say it can't be low testosterone issues, uh, but it's sometimes uh, ED could be uh, early signs for um, uncontrolled diabetes. ED could be early signs for some car coronary vascular diseases as well. Um, that you know that may be creeping up because again, if you're having vascular problems, you know, uh, in in the groin area, you can easily have those same vascular issues in the heart, the same vascular issues in the head as well. Uh, so, and that's something that again, I usually have to spend about five minutes um, trying to talk my patients off the testosterone. Uh, uh, you know, uh, promotion that they usually run into me. They say, hey, doc, I need testosterone. You know, I'm having problems getting up. I'm having problems keeping up. I'm having problems staying up. And they always blame testosterone, even though, and sometimes I even oblige them. I even do testosterone numbers. I show them that the numbers are normal and they still won't think that testosterone is going to help them get over the edge. So uh, men, especially with the men, the men watching, please, please, please uh, understand that uh, ED issues is not only about testosterone. There are so many different medical conditions, could be psychological, but there's so many medical conditions as well um, that plays a huge factor uh, in, in the treatment of that. Um, let me see. Oh, uh, I have a, yes. I I I, I gotta talk to them. They want they want you know they want the Cialises. They want the Viagras. They want I wish the other one, the Vitros. They want they want all of these like quote unquote magic pills. Uh, but in, again, when we talk about especially in medicine, um, I think a lot of patients feel that you know we're just kind of here to kind of prescribe, prescribe, prescribe. Uh, but your doctor is really, especially because, you know, we're nerds. All of us are nerds, right? So we always want to know the why, the why aspect of it. And me just giving you the medication doesn't really answer the why you're having erectile dysfunction issues, the why you're having blood pressure issues, the why you're having diabetes issues. So it's, you know, it's extremely important to, you know, let your doctor kind of, you know, do his full job. Because, um, you know, that's what you pay him for. That's what you paid your copay for. That's what you pay, you know, that your monthly insurance plans for so your doctors can do their job. Let the doctors do their job, especially for my ED issues. Because, uh, again, I get that all, I get that once a day, five days a week um, at the most. And, they, and, again, you know, they see these commercials. They see these magic, you know, magic pill commercials. And they think that's the, the end all be all. And, you know, they want to wipe their hands with it. So, definitely. Um, you know, be very forthcoming when you're talking to, uh, especially my man, be very forthcoming when you're talking to uh, your doctor about uh, your, your ED issues and, you know, let your doctor actually do like a full blown workup before you like start asking for a testosterone. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing? Amanda, a great patient of mine. Um, the last, oh, uh, another one. Ooh. Um, most of my men 
always feel like their spouse is exaggerating, right? Like they, and 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 usually I always, always take this with a grain of salt because again, you have men who don't want to be at the doctor's office. They don't want to take medications. Um, and so they always want me to downplay what their spouse, you know, cousin, part, whoever, like whoever brings them into the office. And, you know, I've, I've talked about it. Um, majority of men who come to see me uh, are usually brought in by somebody. It usually, I want to say, I'm probably lowballing and saying 70% of the time. Uh, someone is kind of pushing them along to come see me. Because, again, we men uh, feel that we're invincible. We feel that, you know, the going to the doctor and admitting that we even have problems, you know, makes us a little bit weaker. So we try to avoid it at all costs. So definitely something to uh, discuss is, you know, uh, when I when I hear that the husband's already wanting me to kind of dismiss, you know, the person who brought him and say, oh, no, well, you know, she's just exaggerating, you know, uh, it's not that bad. Like nine times out of ten, it actually is that bad. And sometimes it's worse. Um, so, again, like my men, you know, you, you tend to always want to downplay, uh, you know, what, what your partners are, you know, are telling you. And, you know, it's definitely something that we got, we got to kind of get over. Um, especially because again, the, the, the women in my practice, they're, they're so forthcoming with information that, um, uh, like I, I usually, I will nine times out of 10 believe them before I believe you. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that, but it's just the truth. Cause I know y'all don't like to tell me everything. I have some of my patients when their wives come, their wives don't even say nothing. They just sit right next to them, making sure that, you know, they said all of their problems and they said, okay, he said everything. Now I can leave the room. Like, cause they, cause they know men tied, try to hold on, uh, to, to problems that they're dealing with. So, um, please definitely shout out to, to the, the many women and all the family members and partners out there who are forcing these guys to go to the doctor's offices, making sure uh, they take care of themselves. And, um, last but not least, this is a big one. Um, my wife, you know, my wife's, uh, you know, mental health counselor. She's working on a PhD. Um, and uh, so I try to incorporate mental health in almost every office visit. And my men, uh, the men in my practice, you know, they never, they, I mean, they, they, sh like, they shun mental health like it's nobody's business. And even though they could be telling me about all of the problems at work, all of the problems, you know, just in life, financially, whatever, um, none of them want to admit, right, that they're sad, that they may be depressed. None of them want to admit that they may be anxious um, because, again, that's that sign of weakness. And that's something big uh, to uh, that's something big that, you know, I, I think is uh, very forthcoming, especially for, for us. And I think we just have to kind of get used to it. We have to get kind of used to being able to be um, as open emotionally. Um, as possible, especially when you're going to the doctor's office. Because again, like this, like, this is how I try to tell them. I'm right? like, hey, you pay, you pay to come see me, right? So why not tell me everything, right? Why not tell me everything? Like you know, this, you know, if, if you're sad, let me know you're sad. We we got things for you. If you're anxious, let me know you're anxious. You know, if you're again, there's you know, it's it's so many uh, different regimens of treatment. Again, and and you, especially when I talk about mental health, I don't, I'm not real quick to give you a medication anyway. You know, I want you to go, you know, see someone to talk to. If you can't talk to me, um, you know, I try to be as open as possible. Um, if you can't talk to me, I try to, you know, get you, uh, you know, to, to see uh, whoever you need to see uh, from that standpoint there. But, you know, you it, it always takes being open and being trustful, uh, like right in the beginning. Uh, and I think that's probably the, the biggest aspect of it all. When you go into your doctor's office... Um, and you you know you're not telling them all the problems that you're dealing with. You're you know you're not being you're not being truthful, and that's really a, that's the really the crux of it all. Um, and if if you're not being truthful, like I can't help you, your doctors can't help you, no one can help you if you're not 100 percent with us. Uh, so that's a, that's why it's so important, especially for my physicians um, out there, and even the patients as well, is to work on you know trying to build that open bond and trust uh, as early as possible. Um, so again, again, and again, I can, I can tell you, I have a lot of, you know, my male patients who, you know, it takes them a couple of visits before they're like, you know what, I trust this guy. Like, I'm actually going to tell them like what's really going on. Um, cause, cause I get that a lot, you know, they random colds, random this. And then by that third visit, they're like, all right, doc, yeah, I'm just, you know, you know, stress is getting to me. The work is getting to me. Like it's, you know, I'm, I'm about to break down and you know, it, but it takes some time. Like I understand First time you come to see a doctor, you're probably not going to get that from your male patient for the majority of the time. I, again, we're not casting this wide net on all male patients, uh, but you know, unfortunately, a majority of y'all uh, tend to do it. Yes, honesty is always the best policy because, again, like I said, we cannot, you know, again, the doctors, we're here to kind of help you, but we can't help you if you're not being 100% honest with us. 
So that, I think that's the that's you know that's really the crust of it all. So again, just to kind of you know recap on what we talked about today. Um, and what kind of spurred a lot of this on? Um, I had a recent, recent article feature in at Fox News. Uh, I'll post a link. Um, I'll post a link later today. Um, as far as you know, it talked about common lies that men tell the doctor's office. So I wanted to kind of elaborate that, and you know, really kind of hit home why uh, these lies are as common as they are, and you know why we need to try to kind of get over that. So one, we talked about you know. This phantom blood pressure that only seems to be high when they come to the doctor's office, uh, but high nowhere else. Um, the fact that they don't snore. Um, the fact that they don't have problems urinating. The fact that they don't have any problems uh, with their vision. Uh, you know, again, they, no one wants to wear glasses. Or they think it's an old person's thing. Um, erectile dysfunction issues. You know, again, we talked about, we hit home uh, the erectile dysfunction issues and how it's not only due to... Um, testosterone being low from that standpoint uh the fact that you know their spouse you know spouses partners they tend to be right so you know again so you know understanding that you know your, your partner isn't really exaggerating when he says he or she says you know i i think so and so has a problem and you need to talk to the doctor uh, so again try to be open and the fact that you know more men need to just be more emotionally open uh, when they come to the doctor and let them know when they're sad, let them know when they're anxious, depressed, and everything else under the sun. Um, because again, I, I think just from a from a, a total health standpoint, um, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, women tend to live longer than us because they got no problems, you know, getting their problems, you know, taken care of. And, you know, if, 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 if men, if we want to catch up to that, uh, you know, we want to live just as long as the women. We just got, we got, it, it starts early. It starts in the doctor's office. It starts with getting your regular checkups. It starts with telling your doctor everything that's going on with you uh, when you do have these problems. Uh, from that standpoint there. So again, um we talked and I said I said if we if we if I hadn't talked about sleep apnea, um I'll probably talk about that next week. Let's, let's you know, let's, especially if I haven't I think I talked about it before, but I can't really remember cuz I know we talked about sleep in general, but if we didn't focus on sleep apnea, let's let's pencil in sleep apnea for next Tuesday, uh most likely. Um and again, I already have a link to today's post, uh, which is uh, my first guest appearance on a podcast with Dr. Dan. Um, it's, it's, it's under the comments, so go ahead and check that out. Download that. Um, download it. Take a listen. Leave a comment on Dr. Dan's site so he knows um, uh, you're listening. Um, and then if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and check out drpiersblog.com. Sign up for, uh, you know, uh, my listserv. That way we'll, we'll make sure, you know, you, when I have my free book, which is still out, drpiersblog.com slash free book, um, out to the month of January. We we'll get that for free. And any free e-books, any free audio books, or anything, you know, that I have that I can give away, uh, make sure you're the first to know. Um, you guys have a great blessed day. I'm actually going to head to the hospital, go see a uh, patient or two, and uh, be out.